Hello, you guys. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we will be taking out the biggest game show cheaters ever caught. So, mm, um, with game shows, man, you can win a lot of money. And, you know, if, if you're not cheating, you're not trying hard enough. But just don't get caught. So, we're going to see who is the biggest cheaters ever get caught. And this video was brought to us by Looper. So, shout out to Looper. A good game show is a well oiled million dollar machine built to ensure both fun and fairness. But with tons of cash on the line, some contestants just can't resist the urge to find a way to beat or cheat the system and win big. Here are a few of the biggest game show cheaters in history, or at least the ones who were caught. Charles Ingram. Who wants to be a millionaire really wants contestants to win, since it's just good TV to see a regular Joe get rich. Even with multiple lifelines available to contestants for especially difficult trivia questions, that just wasn't enough for disgraced Army Major Charles Ingram, who appeared in the British edition of the show in 2001. According to Vice, Ingram stationed two people in the audience, his wife Diana and his friend Taekwon Widdock, both former contestants. As he carefully read off each of the four multiple choice answers out loud, he'd listen for a cough, which was allegedly a signal from his plants as to which answer <laughs> Gentlemen versus players, an annual match between amateurs and professionals and professionals of which sport? Gentlemen be gentlemen be players has an annual between match between amateurs and professionals of which sport. I don't know which one it is, but pretend it's um cricket <coughs> cricket <laughs> Man, if you're a dude like this, he could have at least gotten to like nod or turn his head or like wink. Wink at one that's wrong. Bro said the cough was to tell. Um, that probably was very obvious. Like, after a while. Because if you know this game, you play up. I think it's like maybe 10 to 15 rounds. And you play up. So if the lady cough on every... Hey, we need to get her out of the building. Because she obviously sick. And we don't want nobody else to get sick. And he was cheating was the correct one. Using this ridiculous method pioneered by cheating high school students, Ingram actually won the million pound grand prize. The scheme was ultimately That's discovered bad. and all three were found guilty of, quote, procuring the execution of a valuable security by deception, or in simpler terms, fraud. All three received suspended prison sentences and were fined a combined total of 55,000 pounds, which Charles allegedly never paid. Ingram was also stripped of his title by the Army Board after 17 years of service. Dang. As if that weren't enough bad karma, Charles Ingram later slipped on an apple while mowing his lawn and cut off three of his toes. Oh, Sorry, no. Charlie. Dang. Adriana Abania. In 2014, Spanish model Adriana Abania appeared on Pasa Palabra, Spain's version of Password. Abania's blatant cheating scheme occurred during a segment where she had to listen to song clips and identify the name and performer. The game had barely started when the host and other contestants noticed that she kept looking at a phone she had hidden in her lap. She'd been using the music identification app Shazam. It's just, she literally was cheating in broad daylight. Like, she wasn't even trying to hide it. She, looking at her phone, bro, Shazam is cold, but... I, if I see somebody and they play a cold song for me, I'm just jamming. I ain't gonna never ask you what song. You ain't gonna never. Nobody gonna be able to say they put me on some music, man. She was called out on it right on the show, but everyone just laughed it off. The host, Kristen Galvez, even said that she deserved a special prize for cheating so brazenly. A few days later, Abania made her intentions clear, saying, No one told me that I could not cheat. You also have to understand that it was to help someone else. I'm very altruistic. Khaled El Etani. Millionaire Hot Seat is an Australian spinoff of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. And in 2014, a cocky 19-year-old law student named Khaled El Etani appeared on the show and racked up winnings of $100,000. Oh, where's the cellophane? Where's the cellophane? What's that? I want the cellophane. No, I only get that for two fifty. dollars Did I get the cellophane? After the show aired, he told the media that he cheated. Well, sort of. Saying, I didn't play the game. I played the man. Huh? According to El Catetani, he claimed to nail correct answers to the questions not through knowledge, but by watching the body language of host Eddie McGuire as he read off the multiple choice possibilities. Admitting, if you look at it, you see me working Eddie McGuire. I'm reading every single subtle thing about his face. He also watched the studio audience behind McGuire to see which choice made their faces light up. In the end, El Catetani got to keep his money because utilizing... Alright, this guy was a way smarter cheater than the first guy. The first guy's like, <coughs> B. <coughs> this guy's like, 
Yo. All right, oh boy, I our brows went on C. It gotta be C. If it's not C, then oh well. But his cheat was like, his cheat was using his knowledge around the room. That was smart, man. That's a good cheat. I wouldn't have told nobody, though. See, the problem with people is they always want to talk. You don't got to tell everybody something. The One of the best theme songs um, um, that I've heard is Pretty Little Liars. And at one point, they said, A secret's not a secret unless one of them is dead. So, bro, just keep, keep some stuff to yourself. Using a poker strategy for a trivia game technically isn't against the rules. When asked about his plans for his winnings, El Catetani simply said, quote, I didn't win anything. I earned it. Terry Nice. The Price is Right seems like a difficult game show to win because it involves guessing the, quote, actual retail price of items, which never seem to be anywhere near what you'd see in an actual retail store. So when Terry Nice put in a bid of $23,743 during a showcase showdown in 2008 and hit the prize's retail price exactly, it defied all the odds. How'd he do it? Hasn't happened since 72 or 73, right on the nose. Esquire's profile of Nice revealed his secrets. The man is an analytical genius. Nice has been both an expert blackjack player and an award-winningly accurate meteorologist. I'm Terry Nice. You may be better off sitting at home roasting your nuts on an open fire than going out on the roads tomorrow. Nice told Esquire that he and his wife recorded episodes of The Price is Right every day for four months, then memorized the prices of all the items the show used and frequently reused in the showcase showdown segment. From there, it was just basic math. It wasn't even a new strategy. How did you? That boy didn't cheat. That boy studied. That's not cheating. See, he used his prior knowledge of the game show. Why would, how, how is that cheated? I would say that's cheated. That's just a man being smart with his family. Oh, man. You settled on 2140. I seen that on their last week, and that was the exact price. I know that's what it is. I've seen that. I watch you every day. Host Drew Carey floated another theory. In the audience during the taping was Ted Slauson, a regular price attendee and one-time contestant who had also amassed an encyclopedic memory of showcase prices. Carey and show producers seemed to think that Slauson colluded with Nice and used hand signals to tell him the perfect price, an allegation that both men deny. Nice got to keep his winnings because despite their suspicions, the show couldn't prove he did anything wrong other than being really good at math. Get those nerds! 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 Corilla Barbecue. In 2011, the New York City-based food truck Corilla Barbecue was eliminated from the Great Food Truck Race, a reality show competition in which hopeful street chefs compete for a grand prize of $50,000. The team with the lowest sales gets eliminated, hence Corilla's desperate, if not ill-conceived attempt at staying alive with some bogus profit. Unfortunately, one of you guys tried to cheat. It was clear that you put $2,700 of your own money in the till. The owners of the Korean-Mexican fusion truck maintained their innocence, despite a confidentiality agreement that barred them from speaking out in too much detail. Food Network originally only said that the team was eliminated from the show after making, quote, an unfortunate decision. It wasn't until a 2016 interview with KoreanAmericanStory.org that Corilla Barbecue owner Eddie Song finally cleared up what really happened. Apparently, the team decided to get creative when facing the challenge of not being able to sell meat while competing in Memphis. Song and his crew, quote, formed a little partnership with one of the top Memphis-style barbecue joints and ended up selling empty tortillas and sending the customers elsewhere to get free meat. Ultimately, they bent the rules and got busted. The 21 Gang While most game show cheats are simply over-eager rogue contestants, the scandal surrounding the 1956 game show 21 involved the show's producers and served as the basis for the 1994 movie Quiz Show. According to Charles Van Doren's New Yorker account of the scandal, producers Al Friedman, Jack Barry, and Dan Enright colluded with contestants Herb Stemple and Charles Van Doren in some carefully choreographed high-stakes game show drama. After around six weeks of coach winning for Stemple, the show saw a dip in ratings, possibly due to the unlikable nature of the quirky New York postal clerk. Enter Charles Van Doren, a handsome English professor from Columbia University and the son of a prominent poet. He was similarly coached, and after some staged episodes that ended in ties, Van Doren eventually overtook Stemple. Both contestants walked away with a bunch of cash, and ratings were up. Win-win, right? Wrong. 
No one believed Stemple's claims about the plague of game show fixing until a notebook full of future quiz answers was found on the set of a completely different game show. Stemple testified to a grand jury, which eventually led to congressional hearings and an amendment to the Communications Act of 1934, making it officially illegal to fix quiz shows. It didn't much matter because the networks were so spooked that they abruptly canceled Boy Stemple, they give they giving this man riches, and then he go against us. Why he going against us? We give him this money. Man, you can't bite the hand that feeds you. <sighs> but can't can't read game shows no more. So I guess y'all many of their primetime right, game shows worry. anyway. We're looking for nuts now. We're looking for nuts, nuts. Ah! <laughs> Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube. All right, y'all, boys and girls. Um, that was the biggest game show cheaters ever caught. I am Aubrey Love. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel if you're new. I'm trying to get to a thousand subs. I'm at like 280 now. So hopefully you join the game, man. And leave a comment. I don't know what to comment. But only show love in the comments, man. Because I am Aubrey Love and we show love in the comments. No hate. Love, not hate. So, until next time, man. Gotta bless.